Hi, my name is Sherry Gable, and I'm a member of the United States Pony Clubs. I'm a national examiner and a graduate A from Groton Pony Club in Massachusetts. In today's video, we're going to cover some of the elements of a show jumping course and understanding how to ride them. Our first element is going to be dealing with the terrain. Not every arena is flat because of drainage issues. So today's ring does have a slight grade to it. So we'll notice how the riders handle that when they're going up the hill and coming back down the hill. Some other elements to consider are where the in gate is, where the crowds may gather, or where the trailers are parked, where if you're headed towards the barn or away from the barn. And those may be some other things that we'll watch the riders deal with today. We are going to start with the first fence, will be a single fence, and it will be used to establish the rhythm and the pace and see how the riders handle that. If they don't have a good fence, there's gonna be some time to make an adjustment before we go to the first question on the course. If they have a nice first fence, they'll wanna do a maintenance amount of riding to keep the pace and keep the rhythm to find their way to the next fence. Our second portion of the course will be a six stride related distance. It is not as important to get the number of the six strides as it is to recognize if for your horse's stride, it's a long distance or a tight distance and being able to know your horse and know what adjustments to make as you come into the first fence. If you come in a little weak, you may need to choose to add a stride. If you come in a little forward, you may keep rolling and come out forward to be determined. So know your horse well and know if the distance is a little short or a little long for your horse. Then we're going to do a rollback turn, not swinging too wide, not cutting the corner, and come down to a bending line of vertical to vertical and how much you choose to bend in that line will determine how many strides you get or if you flatten the bend you may get less strides. Now let's get started with our first element. Now we're going to watch our riders head to the first element of the course. So the first fence, single fence, this is set up that they could come off either lead. Our first rider is going to come off the left lead canter. It is going slightly downhill. It is going towards the barn. See how the horses react to that. That was lovely rhythm, nice straight line and landed on the lead coming into the turn. So we'll keep that one. Our second rider is also coming off the left lead canter. The right lead is a little tight in this ring, but the, it does give you the option. You could start either. Lovely straight line, lovely rhythm, and landed on the correct lead for the turn. So this is helpful to use the first fence to establish your pace and your rhythm. So they did that in such a way that I wouldn't change a thing, and they just need to do a maintenance amount of riding to get to the next question, which will be the related distance line. Okay, our first rider will be headed to our related distance line, picking up from the nice rhythm and the nice canter quality that she had going to the first fence, maintaining that hopefully into the second fence. Nice jump in and a really nice jump out. So very nice rhythm, carried the six strides beautifully, wouldn't change a thing. Part of the tough thing about riding the related distance is, is your jump in is going to reflect how you get out. If you have a nice jump in, You'll have a nice jump out. Our second rider is in, on a little bit more of a green horse, less experienced horse. That was a great, great demonstration of the rider's commitment to staying on the line and getting to the oxer at the second fence. She, the horse was cross cantering. She had a weak jump in, but she committed and held it together and did a lovely job getting out over the second element of the line. Our gray horse rider is going to try it again, see if we can make some corrections. Much, much better ride. The horse is green, there's a little confidence there, but she did a nice job of keeping the lead, riding a nice straight line, and keeping the rhythm to get down there in the strides. But again, it's not the number of the strides so much as being able to ride the quality of canter down to the second fence.
Now we're going to watch the more experienced horse go and we're going to remember that going in the related distance is a little bit uphill and away from the barn here. Then we're doing our rollback and after the rollback we're coming a little bit down the hill, vertical to vertical. She did a bit of a shallow bending line there. She straightened it out a little bit and got a five stride. You have a choice here. You can use the five stride on the straighter line or you can bend it a little wider and do the six stride if you add more bend into the line and it is vertical to vertical so you can be very patient here and you don't have to have quite as much stride quite as much gallop on a related distance if it's a bending line or a direct line you have to make an instant decision whether you want to shorten the stride, maintain the stride, or lengthen out your stride. And that time she did a much better job of making a decision right upon the landing of the first jump, the butterfly jump, and then she was able to do a shorter six stride, which would um, actually set her up for whatever element we do next. Thank you for watching part one of our series of understanding the elements of a show jumping round. We hope that this helps you the next time you go out and tackle your show jumping course.